next then is Colleen Robbins. Yes. Colleen, yay! <laughs> long, long, long time member of Right on Joliet, has lived in many coastal areas, including the several uh, in the southeastern United States. Is she, where's Colleen? Oh, there you are, okay. Uh, I saw everybody moving over here, okay. Uh, two of her many interests are the cross between technology and magic and the beginning of legends. So tonight she's going to read a narrative poem called Poor Jack. Yes. Holly Robbins. Now I can officially be hardly nervous up here. <laughs> I wrote this. No, it's fine. It's fine. You sure? Okay. I'm positive. Good. Um, I wrote this a number of years back, but it still reflects the same interests that I still have. Poor Jack. Jack the geneticist, total social misfit. He never really had much of a chance. Alcoholic mother, workaholic father. By his teens, no father at all. Focusing, focusing, this is Jack's genius and his greatest fault. Focused on the wonders of science and biology, but not that kind of biology. Jack is afraid of girls. Poor Jack. Sweet Irina, smart Irina, with mousy hair and thick glasses, to Jack, she is a beautiful princess, high above him. Her voice sounds like an angel. She encourages Jack in her own quiet way. Prom time comes, and Jack has too much advice. Jack is too frightened to ask Irina, and his friend Bill says she isn't fit to go with anyway. Imagine Jack's surprise. Bill and Irina were king and queen of the prom. Poor Jack. Jack threw his focus into his work after their wedding. Build his beanstalk stronger, faster, larger, resistant to disease, its yellow ovoid pods filled with vitamins, a veritable bionic bean. Jack published a little, just enough to draw the wrong kind of attention. Those giants of industry, well, one of them, tried to hire him, but Jack said, no. Poor Jack. Jack got mugged one night. He returned from the hospital to find his work gone. His notes, his seeds, even his computer. What wasn't gone was destroyed beyond recovery. <clears throat> the beans hit the market, started spreading in third world countries. Jack's patent application was filed under the giant's name. What a cash cow! Jack took on the giant, the beginning of a messy court battle. Poor Jack. Jack's focus was on staking his claim to the beans. He never looked at the headlines. His beanstalks were growing out of control like could do, choking out forests, collapsing houses with their weight. Jack's legal fight hit the headlines. He's the only one willing to fight the giant. Other lawsuits wait in the wings, waiting to see who triumphs. Poor Jack. In the midst of legal papers, Jack finds her name, sweet Princess Irina. She belongs to the giant now, but maybe Jack can rescue her. Carefully, so carefully, Jack creeps through the maze of firewalls, like navigating a series of mouse holes. The email message sets her free. Poor Jack. Princess Irina has access to the records. She finds the proof that Jack needs to win, and sings like a bird, or a whistle, whistleblower Irina. Triumphantly, she brings the last bit of evidence to court. The judge awards the patent to Jack. Jack is happy, the giant has fallen. His golden eggs are his again, his beans, and his name is written in on all those waiting lawsuits. Poor Jack. Be careful what you ask for. All right, thank you, Colleen.